Hello, I'm Ellen Goldberg, and welcome to a Tarot Moment from the School of Oracles. In this segment, we're going to take a brief look at the Four Aces. The Four Aces are the leading card of each of the four suits, and they embody the element in their purest form. In fact, their name is always the root of the element of whichever suit, and that root has its beingness in heaven. The aces are very powerful cards. They're the most powerful cards in the minor arcana. When you get an ace in a reading, you know that something very big is happening. A strong force is present and you take it seriously. Each of these is very close to the meaning of the element itself. And we've done segments on the four elements. So it might be fun to go and refer to them. Also to refer in our segment on the tree of life because we talked about how each of the groups of cards, the twos, the threes, of course the aces, belong to the corresponding sephira on the tree of life. The aces belong to the very top of the tree of life, to Keter and therefore it is spirit incarnate, or actually not incarnate yet, but spirit on its way to be incarnate. The Ace of Wands you see is a masculine card. Notice how the wand is very phallic looking. It's so alive. The little green leaves show the onrushing of spring. They're shaped very much like yuds, which is a seed, the building block of the entire Hebrew alphabet. There's power here and vitality and passion. When the Ace of Wands comes in a reading and it's well dignified, know that there could not be any better card to receive at the commencement of an enterprise because there is so much of the onrushing force of life here. There's potency, there's energy. When it's in a more negative mode or ill-dignified, lower polarity, then it's energy that is impotent or too much energy, fury and calamity. Be aware a negative ace of wands can have so much energy all blocked up that it can be very damaging. The ace of cups is feminine and all the aces are gonna alternate masculine, feminine, masculine and feminine. The ace of cups, because cups refer to emotions psychic development, feelings, intuition, creativity, and love. We see what a loving card it is as the dove who is sacred to Venus descends to the cup of receptivity and fills the cup so, so that it runs over. When you get the ace of cups in a reading on the higher polarity, it's love, yearning, psychic development, caring, inspiration. On a lower polarity, it could be a psychic drain, or you going down the drain emotionally, or the creativity all blocked up, or someone who is totally self-absorbed. The Ace of Swords is one of the most important cards in the deck, because swords are the change suit, and the Ace being the most powerful of the swords, this is a card of ultimate change. Change is coming. Change in your process. This is the Sword of Truth, and it represents the middle pillar on the Tree of Life. How do we know that? Because we see at the top the crown, which is Keter. We see somewhere in the middle the six floating yodes, which represent the six Sephira, Tiferet, the sun, which is the direct reflection of Keter. Each of the aces has the hand of God, as you will often see it appear like this in old alchemical and spiritual manuscripts, and each hand is slightly different. You can kind of see the personality that it gives to the element. That hand on the ace of swords is ready for action. This is the sword of spiritual brightness. It's a sword of truth. When the Ace of Swords shows up in your reading, know that there's going to be a lot of change in your own personal process. Or, even more importantly, change in your thoughts about yourself, your identity. The I am dot 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 
you fill in the blank, is one of the things that determines our entire experience of life. This card will show you that there is an enormous powerful force at work. Could be for good or it could be for evil because the greater the light, the greater the shadow. And when this card is in its lower polarity, there is untruth. There is the invoking of force uh, for, well, purposes that are just no good. There's a lot of power here. When it's upright, think of the brightest, finest, truthful things in the world. And when it's reversed, there's lies and deceit and change is blocked. The Ace of Pentacles is like the sun in the sky. The pentacle, as I've mentioned in another segment, is not just a coin. It is a magical symbol of Earth. And here it shines like the sun over a garden. And that garden, remember the path we've seen in so many of the major arcana cards and even in some of the minor arcana cards? Well, here is where it leads. It's come back to the Garden of Eden. Pentacles are interested in manifestation. And this has to do with results. And if you get it in a reading, it is the finest attainment in a matter possible. It is absolute materialization and success of whatever you're working on. But pentacles also deal with the body and the home and all earthly things. On the higher polarity, its results, manifested attainments, perhaps money and security, and on the lower polarity, things are not working out so well. The earth plane is giving you a very hard time, and perhaps you are overly concerned with money and material possessions. Mm -hmm.